Taylor Hill was considered one of the best prep players in the state, averaging more than 20 points a game. As good as she is now, Taylor hasn't even come close to reaching her potential. That's because she's only 15 years old. With all the things going wrong for the Packers this season, just imagine how bad things could be if Brett Favre couldn't play. Many Raider fans, are they excited to see Moss? <laughs> well, he may be gone, but he certainly hasn't been forgotten. Three and six isn't exactly the start the Lady Panthers were hoping for this season, but UWM may get back on track today as they kick off league play against UIC. The Panthers trying to snap a three-game losing streak. Green Bay took the holiday off and gave away a game that they needed badly, and it may cost them. Now with only four games left, the Packers are running out of chances to make the playoffs. When the Packers and the Seahawks square off this Sunday, it'll be the second time around for these two teams this season, and the Packers are looking for the same results as the last time. When Green Bay faced Seattle earlier this season, the Packers dominated the Seahawks. If there was ever a time for the Packers to snap their losing streak at Raymond James Stadium, it's now, because their season may depend on it. Just a day after another embarrassing loss on the field, that following an embarrassing week off the field, the Vikings still believe they can salvage their season. One bright spot for this team, according to head coach Mike Tice, the Green Bay Packers are coming to town. And if they can't focus on their biggest rival, who can they focus on? For FSN Live, I'm Sherry Hardman. The life of a college football player can be demanding. As a student athlete, I arise about uh, 7 o'clock. Between class, I'm usually doing homework. Uh, it's off to football practice. Watch some film. That's a lot to take on, but one player at St. Thomas finds time for all those things and so much more. Ben is just uh, a very, very intense young man. Ben Kessler is everything a college football player is expected to be. Intense, driven, a fierce competitor who wants nothing more than to be the best on the field. I'm focusing at getting off the line fast, getting my hands in, staying low, and uh, beating the man in front of me. Many college football players dream of one day getting a chance to play on Sundays. Ben Kessler's dreams aim a little higher. I recognize my vocation, um, or at least thought about priesthood the first time in, uh, in fifth grade. Um, I wrote a paper about becoming a priest. I didn't receive a very good paper. I was in a public school at the time, and uh, the, the teacher said, this is pretty, pretty an unreasonable goal. It's, uh, it's not reachable. And she wasn't a Catholic. Ben's talent on the football field and his faith off of it has also brought together two worlds that, on the surface, have little in common. Uh, ben kind of put together this football seminary get together for the past couple of years. And to quote uh, one of the fathers of the seminary, he said, you know, it's, it's cool that religion and football can be brought back together. We get to see what the football players are like as, uh, as football players, and then they get to see us as seminarians. To some, football and priesthood may not exactly be a match made in heaven. In fact, Ben is only the second football player in the school's history to study in the seminary. But Father William Baer, Ben's mentor, says he changes that perception. Ben has realized what, frankly, many people have realized for many years, that you can be a tremendous, aggressive, very intense football player, athlete, and still be a model Christian gentleman. You know, that purpose for the football guys is playing football. That purpose for the seminarians is, uh, is Christ. Kicker Ryan Longwell and tight end Jermaine Wiggins make an unlikely pair. The two have become friends since the Vikings locker room was redesigned this season. Kickers are kind of known for being unusual <laughs> type of guys. Uh -huh. What have you learned about him? I have to give Ryan credit. He's just like a regular guy. I've gotten to know Jermaine really well. and. The four guys that have been in the locker the other side uh, of, of me that uh, keep getting cut. So, As an offensive player, fullback Tony Richardson usually doesn't spend that much time with defensive players. But having safety Dwight Smith now next to him in the locker room is helping Richardson on the field when facing opposing defenses. You know, I'm able to talk to him like, hey, how's the running back look, you know, on the team we're playing? Or he's talking to me about defenses or maybe he knows a key about a safety that we're getting ready to play. And so it really helps. And so obviously, um, you know, I'm excited to have the way the locker room set up. Another unusual pairing is actually a trio. Offensive lineman Mike Rosenthal, a pretty quiet guy in the locker room, is sandwiched between safety Darren Sharper and cornerback Brad Smoot, two of the biggest talkers on the team. I'm kind of the uh, mediator between the two of them. I knew about Mike uh, a little bit last year, talked to him a lot when I came over here because uh, I had played against him a lot, but um, now I'm learning out a lot of new things about him. He can't say I'm messy because I keep everything within the line, so don't believe it if he says I'm messy. He, he kicked your shoes. He said you had crossed the line with your shoes. Your shoes are always on his side. They were planted by Smoot. 
He's framing you. He is, he is. Messiness seems to be a common theme. Just ask long snapper Colin Loeffler, whose locker is now next to guard Anthony Herrera. We try to keep this line of demarcation right here in between, but, but it doesn't really work out most of the time. Vikings players say getting to know all of their teammates could translate into wins. You know, obviously, Coach Children's had a method to the madness, so you get a chance to you know, talk to guys that you probably wouldn't you know, normally talk to. The Twins' push towards the postseason has fans excited even here at the fair. While enjoying a little food and fun, Twins baseball is still on the minds of their fans. Fans from all over the state have been coming to check out the Minnesota State Fair and the Twins booth, a destination for fair goers who love the Twins. Some fans even traveled across the country for the Twins experience. We have a whole room in our house back in Arizona that's just dedicated to Twins and Viking stuff. And so I, I had to. I mean, I see every game and I, it's kind of hard not to get involved when it's on your, in your house all the time. How excited are you then for this push towards the postseason? Oh, this is, I think this is the most exciting Twins team of all time. You can stock up on Twins gear, check out plans for the new ballpark and maybe even catch up with one of your favorite players. Let's get over here and do it. <laughs> Pitcher Willie Ayer recently spent time at the booth playing ball with some young fans. Oh, you're going to hit. Wow, you're up. You're up. You're up. That one was a little high. You can't throw the high ones. If you're thinking about coming out to check out the Twins booth but don't want to miss tonight's game, don't worry. They will have the game on at the booth, so you won't miss a thing. Marnie, back to you.